What if I told you that this marshmallow could predict your future? A simple choice is involved. Eat this marshmallow now, or instead, wait 15 minutes and you'll get two. If the choice is given to you as a child, it might have unveiled secrets about your adult life. Make the choice today and it might predict your life in 20 years. Do you think that's possible? Well, stick around till the end and I'll reveal the surprising truth about what it does and does not predict. I'm Eric Vanman, a social neuroscientist at the University of Queensland in Australia. Today, we dive deep into the world of the marshmallow test. What exactly is the marshmallow test? First, let's travel back in time to the late 1960s at Stanford University. Psychology professor Walter Michel and his colleagues conducted a series of experiments with preschool children there. They posed a challenge to the child, resist eating a marshmallow, or in some cases a cookie or a pretzel, for 15 minutes and earn a second one as a reward. You see, Michelle was interested in how we develop the ability to delay gratification. The research at the time suggested it was around four years of age that children mastered the ability to control themselves to wait for later rewards. The experiments that Michelle ran at this time were focused on different variables, like whether the rewards were physically present or not. It turns out that most kids, for example, can wait the whole 15 minutes if the marshmallow is never placed in front of them. But if they had to face the tempting marshmallow head on, many couldn't last more than just a few minutes before they just went ahead and ate the marshmallow. But there were several children, although a minority, who did not give in, no matter what. They waited the whole 15 minutes for the experimenter to return. Michelle was interested in the strategies these kids would use to help them fight the urge just to go ahead and eat the marshmallow. In one article, Michelle and his colleagues wrote, instead of using prolonged attention on the objects for which they were waiting, they avoided looking at them. Some children covered their eyes with their hands, rested their heads on their arms, and found other similar techniques for averting their eyes from the reward object. They talked to themselves, sang, invented games with their hands and feet, and even tried to fall asleep. These were important studies on the development of the skills necessary for delayed gratification. And until the late 1980s, this is what the marshmallow test was known for, a method for studying the processes involved in patience, self-control, and delayed gratification. But it turned out this wasn't just a test of willpower. It was a window into the future. Nearly 20 years later, Michelle and his colleagues tested some of those original children again, who were now young adults. And those who resisted the marshmallow temptation at four years old had better academic outcomes, health, and even social skills. More such studies appeared in the early 90s, with Michelle and his colleagues sparking a new interest in the marshmallow test. So what you did in a simple test at four is related to what you do as an adult? How can that be? The ability to delay gratification is linked to self-control, a crucial skill that plays a role in various areas of life. The idea is that children who can delay gratification have developed better self-control skills, which then translate into better outcomes in various areas of life. Take, for example, this study by Michelle et al. published in Science in 1989. Now first, let me point out that hundreds of children participated in those original studies back in the 1960s and 70s, but in this 89 paper, just 35 of the original participants were looked at. When they were four, some had waited the whole 15 minutes for the larger rewards, whereas others had not lasted very long at all. The amount of time they waited when the marshmallow was in front of them was indeed correlated with their SAT scores decades later a correlation of 0.42 for SAT verbal scores and 0.57 for the quantitative test. Those are very large correlations. Other studies found similar relationships between the ability to wait at age four and their social skills as reported by their parents. Those who waited longer were also less likely to suffer from substance abuse in their 20s. I think you can see why this research was so exciting in the 1990s. What a child was doing at the age of four with a simple marshmallow was predicting what would happen in later life. Maybe new parenting or school techniques could be developed to teach kids to have better delay of gratifications. That's at least what some of the psychologists were arguing at the time. But as with all research, there are criticisms and some alternative interpretations. 
First of all, there's this problem of replicability. A 2018 study by Watts et al. with a larger sample size found that although there was a relationship between delay of gratification and later life outcomes, the correlation was less than half the size reported in those original studies. Even one of Michelle's papers, published in 2020, when the kids were now nearly 40 years old, failed to find any relationship between the ability to wait at the age of four and their present net worth, social standing, high interest rate debt, diet and exercise habits, smoking, procrastination tendencies, and preventative dental care. None of those were, was related to delay of gratification at age four. And then secondly, there were socioeconomic factors in play. Some researchers argue that the ability to delay gratification might be influenced by a child's socioeconomic background. The ability to resist temptation and anticipation of a greater reward is often associated with middle or upper class upbringing. However, for those who come from environments of scarcity and unfulfilled promises, it may be more beneficial to consume the treat that's sitting in front of them rather than relying on the possibility of more later. The original Stanford studies that were done in the 1960s didn't properly address this in their research design. In fact, the children mainly came from a preschool on the grounds of Stanford University, and many were the sons and daughters of faculty members there. Third, there's been this overemphasis on self-control. Although self-control is undoubtedly important, some argue that the marshmallow test might overemphasize its role in determining life outcomes, neglecting other crucial factors like the environment, education, and opportunity. Let's say that the correlation between delayed gratification and SAT scores is 0 0.50. This would mean that 25% of the variance in SAT scores could be explained by the delay time in the marshmallow test. If a child waited the full 15 minutes, we might predict they'd score higher on the SAT compared to a child who doesn't wait. However, 75% of the variance in all of those SAT scores is explained by other factors not captured by the marshmallow test. And this is assuming a very strong correlation of 0.5. It's probably more like 0.25, according to the research by Watts et al. Fourth, there's been a misinterpretation of what was measured. It's possible that the test doesn't solely measure self-control, as factors such as trust in the experimenter may also come into play. Okay, sit in that chair. All right, here's the deal. Marshmallow, for you. You can either wait, and I'll give you another one if you wait, or you can eat it now. Since the experimenters were unfamiliar to the child, it would have been natural for them to wonder whether they would actually return with the promised second marshmallow. Thus, this test may have more to do with the child's ability to trust a stranger than it does with their self-control. And fifth, cultural factors come into play. According to a study published in Psychological Science in 2023 by Yana Oko et al., cultural influences play a significant role in an individual's ability to delay gratification. That study compared children in Japan and the United States and their ability to wait to eat food and open gifts. Children from Japan could wait longer to eat food than they could wait to open a gift, whereas children from the United States could wait longer to open their gifts. Why? The Japanese children appear to have stronger habits of waiting to eat in their daily lives than their American counterparts. However, American children were more likely to experience more consistent waiting when opening gifts such as birthday presents or Christmas gifts. In Japan, gift giving is a year-round practice without any traditions of waiting attached to it. Thus, culture might teach us what things are really worth the delay of gratification, and maybe the differences then in Michelle's kids had to do with such cultural variation. Well, life isn't just about waiting for two marshmallows. It's about understanding our choices and their long-term impacts. Every choice we make, big or small, shapes our future. Adults, too, face their own marshmallow tests daily. Instead of marshmallows, researchers often use monetary rewards or other adult-relevant incentives to study delay of gratification and self-control in adults. Although these adult versions of the marshmallow test differ in methodology from the original test with children, they tap into the same underlying concept, the ability to delay immediate gratification for a larger or more beneficial reward in the future. In fact, such research indicates that adults who delay gratification often make healthier decisions, save more, and even avoid substance abuse. 
This brings me back to that first question I asked about what the marshmallow test actually predicts. I think your ability to delay gratification today is what really matters. It's more strongly related to other tasks of everyday life that require this ability. Thus, what you did at the age of four isn't going to be strongly related to what you do in your 20s because of all of your life experiences. There is no simple test like waiting to eat a marshmallow that's going to say very much about your future 20 years from now. That's sort of a comforting thought, isn't it? Your life isn't so predetermined. What do you think about all this? Why don't you leave a comment below about any marshmallow tests that you face today? And add a wink emoji to your comments so I'll know that you made it to the end. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights into psychology and neuroscience. Until next time, stay curious. Bye.